Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to another very interesting case. What we have in this patient's right ear is a canal cholesteatoma. And then in the patient's left ear, which I'll show you in the second part of the video, we have what I think is the very start or beginning of, a, of another canal cholesteatoma, but it's a very small lesion with exposed bone. And it's something that I nearly missed actually because it was hidden away under a flap of skin. But uh, we'll start with this right ear. And those of you who do suction or look in ears regularly will see that there's something wrong here. This debris looks very suspicious, particularly that pale, wet lesion down below. And uh, as I remove some of this wax and dead skin, you'll see the superior portion of the eardrum. So right there, that kind of bluish skin. So given that that's the superior part of the drum, that wet, pale lesion doesn't make sense. The architecture's wrong. You know, that, that definitely doesn't feel right. And as I remove and strip away more of this debris, the, the canal cholesterol will become very clearly demarcated. So, so what is a canal cholesterol It is, it's, it's quite rare. It's, it's uh, far less common than a middle ear cholesterol And it is an, a growing accumulation of dead skin in the ear canal, but it is accumulating in a uh, a pocket or a trench or a crater or some sort of depression and that growing accumulation will cause uh, the bone to erode and uh, as you can imagine inflammation of, of surrounding tissues which is exactly what you'll see. There is exposed bone in, in the pit of the crater. So we'll, uh, we'll just remove this flap and then it will become very clear what's wrong in this ear. So you can kind of see it there but uh, as I'm suctioning away you'll see that the, the surrounding skin is very, um, what I call pillowy or cushiony or I guess squidgy. And, and that's a clear sign that, as well as the redness, um, you know, there is fluid pooling in the tissue. And again, that's a sign of inflammation. So now many of you will be thinking at this point, was this chap in pain? Did this really, really hurt? And actually, no. And, and that's probably a clue to you as to what's going on here. Um, he didn't know he had this and he could not feel me poking and prodding around in there. Well, he could feel a, a very slight tickle from time to time, but for the most part, he couldn't feel me doing this. So bearing that in mind and also bearing the fact that there's another lesion, a very suspicious lesion in the left ear, then you might be thinking is something systemic going on here. And you'd be right, this patient is diabetic. He was actually diagnosed as borderline diabetic a year ago, um, but has since not been followed up and he's not been, you know, monitoring his, his sugar levels. He's certainly not been controlling his diet. In fact, there's been no attempt at all to control his sugar levels and he has quite a poor diet. Just here, you see this kind of yellow stuff that I'm scraping my Zolna probe against? That is bone. And the it's a very distinctive feeling that you get back from the Zolna probe. So very, very different from hard dead skin or hard wax. It is hard as a nail. And the best way I can describe it is if you're holding like a metal teaspoon and you're scraping against a brick, like a rough brick, that is the feeling that I'm getting in my hand. So that is bone. And uh, so yeah, the patient was, was um, sort of borderline diabetic um, over a year ago. And now, as well as you know, this pathology, he's also getting some numbness developing in his fingertips. So I think clearly this is related. Um, in terms of how it's related and, and why, has, why, why I think the diabetes in this canal cholesterol and the other lesion is connected is, uh, uh, my theory is that the diabetes has caused um, a little bit of the bone in, in the meatus to lose blood supply. And that little piece of bone is delaminated so I guess you, you could call that benign osteitis or benign osteomyelitis. So the little piece of bone has lost blood supply due to the diabetes and then is delaminated. And that's where the original trench or crater started from. Just a little raggedy piece of dead skin here on the right hand side, not really a problem. Or is it? We'll revisit that in a moment. But uh, I just thought I'd give you a comparison. Left ear looking relatively normal, apart from that thin section on the TM. And then there is the canal cholesterol. So that comparison, I think, is a really, really nice thing to show because you can sort of imagine 
how the right ear canal would have looked before the canal cholesteatoma started eroding all that bone. And I think that if my theory is right and the, and the little piece of bone delaminated, that would have been the start of that keratin, that dead skin accumulating in the pocket. So, you know, I was in half a mind to leave this, you know, piece of dead skin, but I decided to go back and clear it up. And it's a good thing I did because as you can see, something is not right here. And again, that sort of, sort of off yellow debris that's actually inside this little pocket is also bone. And you'll see me before the video ends, you'll see me kind of rubbing against it with the Zollner probe, again, which the patient couldn't feel. And uh, it is that same feeling, that sort of spoon on brick, hard as nails feeling, very, very distinctive. And you can also see as well that, again, the tissue surrounding this little pocket is also a little bit edematous. And, and that's, that's just swelling. So um, fluid pooling in the tissue as a result of, of vasodilation. So, um, so what, what's gonna happen to this patient? Well, two things. First of all, I wrote, I wrote to his uh, GP to hopefully get his, this diabetes situation resolved or, or, or under control. And then I was able to get him in front of an ENT consultant that afternoon. And the ENT doctor confirmed the canal cholesteatoma and this patient is being managed. Now, the ultimate prognosis, what's gonna happen, I'm not sure. But if I hear any updates, I will certainly let you know. And if you have any theories uh, about how the diabetes is connected to the canal cholesteatoma, or you have a little bit more insight into um, the pathophysiology of canal cholesteatoma and diabetes, let me know in the comments section below. I'd be really interested to hear your theories. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about what you've seen, leave them down in the comments section below. If you want to do what I do and train with me to do endoscopic ear care, go to durhamhearingspecialists.com forward slash training, and I will see you guys on the next video.